Welcome to episode 8. If you made it this far, then congrats. You have yourself a functioning visualizer. But, there's not much in it. So what we want to do is add some new sorts. And I'm going to show you a quick way to add a bunch of fairly similar but unique sorts. And this is a new category of sorts that many people haven't really looked into. So what we're going to get is we're going to get our bubble sort here. And we're going to duplicate it. We're going to make a new message called run gap sort. Now we're going to go into our ask. And we're going to add a new sort to our sort list by just simply duplicating this here and putting in gap sort. And now we get to add two dash to our answer input. Now when we go into sort broadcaster, we're going to want to copy and paste this like we did for our list type. And if list type is equal to 2, we want to run gap sort. Now what we're going to do is rename this name to gap sort. And now inside a gap sort swap mechanism, we're going to add something interesting. Well, not inside of here, actually down here. We're going to, instead of using an if statement, we're going to use an if else. So just go ahead and remove this old if statement and make sure to keep your change i and change j on the end. Otherwise, stuff will not work. So now what you're going to do is you're going to make a new variable named gap. And you can also go ahead and hide this variable because we do not need to see it. We're going to set gap to 2. We're going to make another variable named starting gap. Hide that one as well. We're going to set that to 2 because it's the same as gap. Actually, we're going to set this to gap in here. We're going to set starting gap to gap right here. We're going to now pull out a fancy schmancy or operator. Duplicate this done equals true and replace it with start gap, starting gap equals 1. At the very end here, after the change i by and the change j by, we're going to add two new if else statements. Or no, we're going to add two new if statements. Sorry. A less than and a less than. And what we are going to get is if gap is less than and if i is less than. right after your i and j. You're going to do if gap is less than 1 and if i is less than 1. And you're actually going to copy and paste that one and do a if j is greater than length of data. Now you're going to need set gap to 1 set i to 1 and set j to length of data. This just prevents your gap from becoming negative, our i from going off the left side of the list, and our j from going off the right side of the list. Now what we need to do is add the cool stuff. Up here, we want to set j to i 
plus gap. That will make it so that j is however many, however big the gap is, plus i. So it's if the gap is one, it'll be one item ahead of guy, like bubble sort. But if it's two, it'll be two items ahead. Now what we're going to do is over here, we're going to change, if there is a swap, we're going to change gap by one. And if there isn't a swap, we're going to change gap by negative one. And also if there is a swap, we're going to change i by negative one. Now let's see what this does. I'm going to turn this off turbo mode so we can see it faster. I mean, see it easier. Hmm. It seems that our updating is not working properly. We're going to have to change this to i and link the data minus 1. Hmm. Oh, what we want to do is put and here, not or. Let's see if this makes sense. Yeah, that, that sure did fix it. I forgot to place this here. We'll put this at the very, 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 very end, but inside of this large repeat until. Okay, let's do this again. Now, as you see, the two gaps are farther apart from the, the, the two gaps spread apart, the two pointers, I should say. And once J reaches the end of the list, it stays there. Now, you remember how I said that it could go off the list too? Well, here's how you can do that. Instead of just changing I by one, what if we change it by negative two? Now stuff is starting to move backwards. What if we do negative three? I forgot a little something. We're going to want to do that. Now it's acting interesting. It wouldn't be one of my videos if I didn't constantly forget stuff. Uh-oh. That's not right. Okay. Let's reset this so that it's better and normal. There it is.
<laughs> okay, what if we do a reverse list on this? Okay, so what we're going to do here <laughs> is we're going to remove this and put it into here. And we're going to remove this and put it into here. We're going to do this, this, and that. And we're also going to replace this I with a J. Actually, we will remove this one all entirely. Not exactly the best sort. What if we do this? Interesting. What if we do this? Even more interesting. Now, you can always do stuff like this. Let's do negative 3, negative 6, negative, or regular 9. You can just add random numbers and see what you get. And you could honestly spend hours playing with these, this code and getting different results still. Oops, I messed something up. <laughs>
So go ahead, duplicate this, make your own, make thousands of these. There are so many number combinations out there and they're just waiting to be explored. So until next time.